going on everyone? Lolan here. I recently got approved for Capital One's Venture X credit card. And what I want to do here is provide an update of my experience thus far, and more importantly, share what you need to know if you're considering applying for Capital One's Venture X. For a more detailed overview of the Capital One Venture X as well as an unboxing, feel free to check out the video. I'll link it in the description below. And at the highest level, Capital One's Venture X is Capital One's most premium travel rewards credit card, coming in at an annual fee of $395, and it's usually compared to American Express's Platinum card, as well as Chase's Sapphire Reserve. You have a 100,000 mile signup bonus, which can be used to redeem for cash back, as well as travel through Capital One's travel portal, in addition to transferring to travel partners and a few other use cases. With the $395 annual fee, you have some credits as well as benefits. For example, you have a $300 travel credit, which can be used on Capital One's travel portal, where you can book hotels, rental cars, as well as airfare. This $300 you get annually, and in addition, after every account anniversary, you also get 10,000 miles. If you're thinking about getting the Capital One Venturex anytime soon, there's a limited time $200 vacation rental statement credit that you'll get in the first year of card membership. This $200 vacation rental booking credit, it's for items like Airbnb, VRBO, and other vacation rental merchants, which Capital One notes in their terms and conditions. You have $100 towards global entry as well as TSA pre-check, and in addition to that, you get Priority Pass, where you can access multiple airport lounges across the world. And more importantly, you also have, specifically speaking, Capital One's airport lounges, which are up and coming. There's only a couple at this time, but with time, that will be its own potential network, similar to Amex's Centurion Lounge network. In terms of earning structure, we're looking at 10x miles on bookings made through specifically the Capital One portal for rental cars, as well as hotels, and 5x for the same bookings made through the portal on all airfare, and 2x everywhere else. Starting off with the signup bonus, immediately when that minimum spend was hit, I got those bonus miles deposited into my account. And as you're trying to hit that spend, it actually says, hey, you have X amount of more dollars to go. And once you do, it says, hey, you're ready to redeem your bonus miles. So very straightforward. It wasn't waiting one to two billing cycles like with some other competitor banks that we know of. But at the same time, it was really relieving to see that, hey, there was a tracking mechanism. And at the same time, the points were deposited immediately and if anything, instantaneously. Similarly with the miles you earn, instead of waiting those multiple cycles after the fact, it was very similar to the sign-up bonus. The moment you swipe and spend, when that purchase clears and goes through, those miles are added to your redeemable available miles balance. This one can seem a bit specific, but hear me out with the logic of why I really appreciate this one. Back in the day when the Chase Sapphire Reserve had a $300 travel credit, when you spend on eligible purchases, you get 3x in that spend. With the Capital One Venture X, you also have a $300 credit to be used through the portal. After some years, the Chase Sapphire Reserve actually stopped allowing 3X on that travel spend for that $300 credit. So for context, 3X at $300 is 900 points or 900 miles essentially. And this way you can be redeeming it for cash back or for any other purposes. So that first 300 to spend with that credit, you'd be getting at least something. But as the years went on, you get nothing with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But with the Capital One Venture X, you indeed actually get something back by spending that credit. And it's not just at the rate of 3x, but because I was using this spend for that credit through the portal, which is exactly the only way to use that credit, you basically were getting 10x on hotels and rental cars and 5x if it was airfare. And so because I booked a hotel through the Capital One travel booking portal, I basically got 10x, so $300, if you're getting 10x, that's 3,000 miles. And depending how you value those miles at two cents per point, 3,000 miles is like, let's say 30 bucks, but times two, now we're looking at $60. So even though we get a $300 credit, which can offset our $395 annual fee by $300, in reality, depending on how much you value those actual miles, you could be getting $360 of value against that 395 annual fee. And if you consider the 10K actual anniversary bonus, you're talking about instead of just, let's say 400 in available potential one cent per point mileage use case, you're actually looking at way more value overall, more closer to 460. So more than just giving you a standard $5, which we can do at one cent per point, in terms of what value we're getting from the Capital One Venturex, you can get a lot more. And from there, we got the $200 vacation rental credit. That credit as well, instantaneously, once it went through, that credit hit my account. So it's really good to see that the terms and conditions say one to seven business days, but up to two billing cycles. But when this comes up, it's really nice to see that it's actually ASAP versus waiting for that longer type of situation. Next up, we got Priority Pass. And it's not really about the benefit of Priority Pass, but it's the fact that when you actually get approved for the Capital One Venture X, you don't need to tell anyone or do anything or sign up or anything regarding Priority Pass. It will just come to you. 
And why this matters is if you get the Amex Platinum and you get approved for it, if you don't go and actually enroll to get Priority Pass in terms of your membership cards delivered to you, they're not gonna come to you. And if you have a last minute trip booked and you're trying to redeem this benefit, it may take, let's say two to three weeks for your Priority Pass membership cards and numbers to be not just generated, but to get to you. And so just the bottleneck of this whole situation with you just not needing to do anything is really seamless and I couldn't wish for it any other way. This next point is kind of niche, but it deals with the transfer fee where I noticed that the Capital One Venture X and when you compare to other Capital One Venture, the line of cards, you actually have no transfer fee on the majority of them but on one of them where you have 0% in terms of your intro APR, then you do have 3% in terms of your transfer fee. But when you think about it, if there's a 0% transfer fee or a $0 fee to transfer balances from X place to the Capital One Venture X, but you still hit interest in that same billing cycle, if you don't pay off your bill in full and on time, then it could be questionable of why one may want to do this, but I have one conjecture I'll share here, and then if you know anything more, happy to hear it, do comment down below. I think what we've been hearing is that approvals on the Capital One Venture X in terms of your credit limit is a lot more compared to other cards, generally speaking. And so with this, maybe there's a maxed out card that you have. And the irony is if you're maxed out and let's say your credit's not that great, you may not get approved for the Venture X, but all else equal, let's say you transfer that debt to the Venture X. And in addition, you have X amount of credit lines. So here you're not maxing out card A, but with the Venture X, you're not maxing it out either, but you definitely just had filled it up a little but again, you know, don't go into debt, the same old stuff, pay off your bill in time and in full. But if there's another use case that I don't know about, I'm happy to hear it. If you've done some research already regarding the Capital One and Venture X, you've probably heard that you can get up to four authorized users for free, essentially without paying any extra fee on top of your annual fee of $395. What's good to know is that if you compare the Capital One Venture X's authorized user fee compared to the likes of the Chase Sapphire Reserve or the Amex Platinum, with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you have to pay $75 per authorized user. So if you have two of them, it's 150. If you got four of them, it's $300. On the other hand, with the Amex Platinum, an authorized user, it costs you $175 up to the first three. So if you want a fourth or a fifth or a sixth, each and every one after the first three, it's gonna be a singular 175 extra. So for four authorized users, you're looking at 175 plus 175, which is gonna be $350. With $0 as the authorized user fee for the Capital One Venture X, yet still getting benefits such as Priority Pass, that itself could be more beneficial than not. Before the Capital One Venture X came out, the Chase Sapphire Reserve was the card I used to have an authorized user for just for that pure benefit of Priority Pass, which was 75 bucks a year. In this scenario, I basically never need to pay 75 again for Chase Sapphire Reserve's authorized user fee for me to get the benefit of Priority Pass. I can just keep the Capital One Venture X and get that same benefit at no extra cost. Coming to transfer partners, there's a unique airline with Capital One, which you can't find really elsewhere, and it's Turkish Airlines. They're part of Star Alliance, and you have Star Alliance members. For example, with Chase, you got United, and with American Express, you have ANA, All Nippon Airways. Point being that if you have some type of sweet spot redemptions with Turkish Airlines, it could definitely be advantageous. And it's just cool to know that, hey, if Turkish Airlines are some type of sweet spot that's really amazing, and this is, let's say, the only way you can transfer miles to Turkish Airlines, Capital One Venture X, it allows you to keep your card without feeling like you're paying an annual fee for no reason, and so you're benefiting in that nature as well. The Capital One Venture X to me is a no-brainer. It really pays for itself. Naturally, the portal and the limitations of certain airlines or hotels that you can get through it. The deep dive for that could be a different video on its own. But at the same time, table stakes wise, I think it's a great card. I got instantly approved back in the day, a little above 700 credit score, so just for context. And with that, I got a decent credit limit as well. It was my first real Capital One flagship card as I shared in the initial video. So check out that video in the description below. But with that, you also get 50% off at all Capital One cafes with a Capital One card, not specific to the Venture X, but with that, thanks for coming to the end.